representatives from our sponsorship companies, employees, professors and students. Thank you for being with us this evening. Some of them are following uh, remotely, so thank you for being with us for our annual HEC Foundation evening. So, let's build the future together, is the theme of this evening. Of course, we will come back to moments of the campaign and the progress of the campaign and also projects that are very dear to us and which are only made possible thanks to you, in fact, and your philanthropy. And of course, we'll talk about the future. Last year, we were in the, on the HEC campus to celebrate the spirit of innovation. This year, we are in a wonderful place, which some of you are discovering for the first time, the Maison de l'Océan. And I'm going to call on Mathieu Kanderou, who is the project manager for the Oceanographic Institute, to tell us about it. Thank you. Bonjour. Excusez-moi, est-ce que le micro oui. Bonjour, bonjour à toutes Hello, et à tous et bienvenue à la Maison de l'Océan. Je suis Mathieu Condorou, chargé de mission événementielle au sein de l'Institut Oceanographique et je vais prendre la parole très brièvement pour vous donner quelques I'm éléments concernant notre institution. Ce bâtiment que nombre de vous avez découvert pour la première fois est l'un des deux établissements de l'Institut Oceanographique et de l'Institut Foundation. Albert Premier, Prince of Monaco. De, de I'd just like to take this opportunity to do a quick survey. Put your hands up for those of you who are discovering this place for the first time. Alors, en effet, je crois est so I think que indeed it is important that I present our institution to you briefly. In this place, since 1911, the Oceanographic Institute has been working to mediate, to organize events, bringing together political decision makers, economic leaders, students, the public, and of course, scientists, with always the same objective, to know, to love, and protect the ocean, which is the roadmap given to us by our founder, Prince Albert I, more than 100 years ago. Mainly listed a historical monument, this institute completes the work of the prince, a pioneer and explorer. He himself did a lot of exploration around the seas at the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century. You can have a glimpse of this around you by these fresques painted by the author Louis Tiner, who accompanied the prince on his Today, the Maison de l'Océan brings together actors for oceanographic protection and the environment, making it a real environmental hub in the centre of Paris. The second establishment is where more well known. It's the Museum of Oceanography of Monaco. Il est le véritable navire it is de notre the flagship of our foundation, and every year receives more than, uh, than 650,000 visitors. The Oceanographic Institute aims at raising awareness about and the wealth of the oceans and work to protect, protect them. This year, a big the thematic program devoted to the cooler worlds HEC is being organized. Today is a specific event. The HEC Foundation has decided to organize its annual event here, and I would like to take this opportunity to thank the management and the organization team for their trust. We're delighted to welcome you here today, and I would just like to wish you a really nice evening. Thank you for your attention. And now I'm going to hand over to Mr. Olivier Sibiu, who is the Director of the Foundation, the HEC Foundation. Thank you very much. Bonsoir et quel plaisir de, de vous voir tous. Good evening. What a pleasure it is to see you all here together today, physically, after this period of COVID. Three years ago, I was here, opposite you, in another place, to announce the launch of a very ambitious campaign, Impact Tomorrow, 
of five years, which was to raise 200 million euros for the school. I'm delighted this evening to tell you that two years from the end of the campaign, we are already 150 million euros of donations or promised donations. If I had to resume my mindset, I would say that, and you'll see tonight, HEC changes a lot of destinies of young, talented people. You change the destiny of HEC. Really well done and thank you for your help. This energy, I am just the humble representative behind it. Behind all of this, of course, there is an alignment between the foundation and the school, a wonderful alignment between the foundation, the school and the association of alumni and with the Paris Chamber of Commerce and Industry. All of this ecosystem is aligned to the service of this cause and this objective. Of course, there are also donors and volunteers, as well as giving their philanthropy, spend time and give us their time. I would like to mention Daniel Bernard, who continues to give a, 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 a hand and coaching. It's quite challenging uh, to have Daniel as a coach. I would also like to mention Jean-Pierre Agou. Not just in your role as president of the school, but Jean-Paul helps us in our fundraising. He has a decisive uh, role, uh, and it's wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, he's not here tonight, but Hubert Jolie is also very active in his uh, personal contributions in fundraising. And I would also thank Rémi Goudiot, who has taken up the campaign committee for the foundation, and you will see him later and give him a round of applause. He'll tell you uh, about uh, some important things. And the board of the foundation, there's a, an office and people who are spending time and energy, I can't mention them all here, but without them, I could not do much. And, of course, there's the Foundation team, directed by Delphine, many of them are here this evening. Um, really, without Delphine, I serve no purpose at all, I can tell you that. Of course, there's the school. Loïc is super active as well in fundraising, as he answers immediately whenever you need him. So, Really well done as well. Raphael Gauthier, you'll hear him later. He looks about uh, 50, looks after the partners with, uh, partnership with companies and contributes to the success. And Adrien Marguerite, uh, I wanted to tell you, it's not so easy, in fact, but it's a real pleasure. Despite my other occupations, it's a real pleasure. Um, to work with all of these people in such an important cause. And we have, we have Jean-Luc Adrenay who is here with us as well. Faithful among all the faithfuls who knows the place very well. Also. So all of this is fantastic. And if I had to summarize, all of these people are motivated by one conviction. The conviction that HEC is a wonderful platform to make the world a better place in many ways. In terms of equality of opportunity, you'll see what we can do this evening. In terms of inclusion, it's very concrete what we do thanks to your donations, you will see. In terms of producing knowledge to advance the business of tomorrow. It is really a first-rank school in terms of worldwide research. 
we do wonderful things in terms of entrepreneurialism. You'll see, I learned yesterday that more than a third of the um, French business owners were, were trained by HEC. HEC, it's making France radiate. It make, radiates our values of excellence, of merit and audacity and the need and will to act. All of this, the hours that we spend, as well as our normal jobs, it doesn't really matter, it really is a pleasure. En résumé, vous avez bien compris qu'en donnant à la Fondation HEC. To summarize, you understand, by giving to the HEC Foundation, it's giving, you are contributing to this cause. And of course, we're going to go much further. We, we have for an ambition to go much further. That's why we have brought you together this evening. We're going to talk about, and I'm going to stop here and wish you an excellent evening. Thank you very much. Merci, merci Olivier. Alors pour parler de cette euh, dynamique de campagne, so je vais un peu plus. Marguerite, Marguerite Galland, directeur général de l'association, et Raphaël Gauthier, qui manage les partenariats avec les entreprises dans la école. Merci beaucoup Delphine. Thank you. Tu pourrais dire que tu peux rester stable et tu vois. Voilà, est-ce que tu peux voilà nous donner un petit peu ton avis sur ce que tu as fait depuis la campagne went. You take you take it over for a year and a half from Olivier. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. On a enfin Olivier a montré le compteur. Olivier started off, so we had a great start to the campaign. But the environment was quite upset. We started the campaign. We were confined with uh, lock in lockdown with COVID, and we had to learn. We had to adapt. So we raised money with Zoom. So it actually worked quite well. We were even ready to accept crypto coins. Well, we haven't done that for a few months, but it was something we were ready to do. And it can be seen in the figures. We have 260 major donors. Many of you know what that means. That means donors who will give at least 150,000 euros. We have 600 club donors between 500 and 100,000 euros. It's a very uh, significant amount. And when we look uh, recently, over the last 12 months, we have 25 new key donors who have signed up. It's uh, much more than we have seen before. And it's not falling off, despite even Macron's uh, economy. So we're very happy. And you were talking about Olivier Combasté. I want really to thank him. Olivier was the president of the campaign committee previously, and it's thanks to him that we started off so well. Thank you, Olivier. I don't know if you're here. Um, and he passed over the chairmanship to me. So we strengthened the campaign committee, and we we recruited or we managed to get uh, recent graduates with us from 2003, 2007, who were working in technology and finance and consultancy, also in uh, business uh, law. 50% feminine, a great team spirit, and I would like to thank everybody because it's thanks to those men and women that we are doing this work. This is an, a call to all of you. We would really like to thank all of you for your generosity. We encourage you to continue to help us to convince your uh, friends to donate. You know that the fiscal environment in France is very favorable for donations. And 
as well as the very high sums given by our donors, it's important that everyone is able to give to just show, you can even give symbolic donations. So around you, don't hesitate to encourage people to donate. And finally, there's another thing that Olivier mentioned, which is a development for uh, access for the foundation. It starts from a simple day. Many people have done HEC, but many have not studied at HEC. So um, this uh, market could even be bigger if we looked at the people who haven't studied to HEC. So obviously we're not going to have the same to rate of conversion, but we need to speak to them as well. But with the help of COIC, with the 25 new key donors, we've convinced three of them to join us. Some of them are here, Nicolas Comelikis, Eduardo Fernandez, and um, Oli, if you're here, please um, give them a round of applause. Eduardo Fernandez, Eduardo Fernandez said uh, he will um, join us as well. The reason uh, people who haven't studied at the HEC uh, donate. It's because maybe they have members of their family who have studied here, but it's linked to the causes that are defended by the foundation. And of course, there's uh, the um, grants for students um, and also support that is given to students from countries at war. This is a subject that really does motivate people outside HEC. So I think we can give these students uh, a round of applause with the foundation's project have uh, uh, the possibility to study at HEC. In our new donors, we have several people. We have a video to show you. I decided to donate to the foundation to uh, support the equality of opportunity. Everyone should be able to uh, access excellent education. I knew, always knew I would give to the HEC Foundation because I know that they give grants to students who could never do that type of study. Um, I support, uh, decide to support the HEC Foundation because this foundation has a very high impact. Experiences. I wanted to do my part to help students from socioeconomically challenged backgrounds access the top-notch educational opportunities provided by HSC. Once uh, I was asked to be a mentor to HEC grant um, students, so that was in interesting for me because their, the potential of these women, their intelligence and their brio, you want to give them even more, in fact, and they have to go as far as possible and give them subsidies to help them, so my commitment to the HEC Foundation is complete. To work for the HEC Foundation is essential. Uh, I mentor um, students with grants in the foundation and I am part of the HEC stand-up program which helps um, women entrepreneurs from poor um, to, um, areas to develop their I was company. also impressed by HEC Foundation's support of innovative and impactful alumni-led initiatives such as the HEC Imagine Fellows program. HEC has to stay in the first line and radiate internationally and I'm delighted to contribute. I'm delighted to be able to contribute to that mission and encourage others with an interest in educational initiatives to do so as well. Thank you to the committee because you really do a great job. So, perfect transition to welcome Marguerite. You direct the association now for the last two years and we worked on wonderful projects together over the past year and I'd like you to tell us about them. Yes, very nice projects, Delphine, and we're very happy to support the foundation. It's really nice to see that the mobilization uh, uh, and the, 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 in, the, in the circle of key donors. So to remind you, the, our mission in the association is to animate and um, federate the alumni. So we have communication tools, media, events. We also have clubs uh, for uh, graduate years, uh, chapters. All of this life of the network uh, cultivates 
um, the, 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 it's, it's, it's a fertile land for the, uh, for the foundation. So you talked about um, events that marked us, was probably the HEC Gala, which was last April in Paris. Some of you were present, 300 people, uh, in an evening, more than 800,000 euros raised for the foundation, and specifically for the Imagine Fellows um, HEC Foundation. So it's Adrian Lussenbaum uh, who sponsored this project, so the great mobilization of the community. As well as this highlight of the network, we can also mention some examples. You heard someone talking about mentoring earlier. Um, HEC um, mentors 60 uh, grant students at the moment. It's, this is a donation of time and um, clubs of the graduate years work very hard for the foundation as well. I'll give you a few examples. The club Generation Share in 2021 raised um, 55,000 euros for grant students. HEC 2009 graduations, very young, already three years, uh, they celebrated 10 years of graduation. They gave themselves a very ob ambitious um, objective of 250,000 uh, euros for the foundation and they already uh, exceeded this objective after two years and they've decided to double it. So every year their reunion uh, works hard for the foundation to raise money. There's also age 67 celebrated their 55th uh, anniversary and they've also uh, been raising funds for the foundation. So these are collective measures, initiatives, um, um, driven by this affection that uh, uh, alumni that uh, were very lucky to have uh, with their wonderful projects. In terms of with the association, we also work very closely with the teams in the foundation. Things that we do, for example, is encouraging donations every time somebody pays on the website of the association. For example, if you buy a subscription uh, or a participation in an event or a service, you are encouraged to make a donation to the foundation. These are micro donations, uh, 150,000 euros over five years. For example, it's like one major donor. Um, these are uh, 1,300 little donations, but uh, they all make up uh, something uh, big. So thank you to all of those people and well done to the foundation. Thank you. So uh, I'd like to say hello, mention an event that we had this year. It's the class gift. We haven't had it for three years. Some of you know it very well. It was created 17 years ago. The principal, it's a dinner organized by the year that's graduating on the HEC campus, which is also to raise funds for students who um, get grants the following year. This year we had three classes graduated together, 900 people on the campus, so it has never been seen before. And these three uh, years, with the uh, support of their um, uh, sponsors, including Adrien Couvet, uh, raised enough fund, uh, funding to um, fund 15 uh, grant students. So these three years classes that graduated together have contributed the most in terms of the number of donors. Well done to them and thank you very much to the association class gift for this uh, mobilization. So it's a really nice example. So, hello, Raphael. Olivier mentioned that companies, the support of companies is also very precious to the school and to the foundation because they um, contribute 40% of the funding to the school and it's you and your team that look after companies. Can you tell us um, the importance of this support of, of companies and uh, how your year went last year? Hello everybody, thank you for having me here tonight. I think uh, everyone would like to thank the 38 sp companies, the spons sponsor companies and partners. So to give, let's have focus on the 22 of them that have renewed and strengthened their support. I'm going to name them. So there's Société Générale, L'Oréal, Crédit Agricole, CIB, Natexis, uh, with Rugby, ECG, Bread, KPMG, McKinsey and Accenture. And also those who have joined us, Vinci, CMA, CGM, ICAD, and the firm Davois, Villet, Mayo, Brochet. And we are very grateful uh, for this, and it's very important to say again how much the support 
of companies is uh, important because it helps us to conduct research uh, into um, challenges by sharing knowledge as widely as possible and also jointly creating innovative educational content by changing destinies we're going to talk about a lot uh, tonight by, by grants through grants and by widening the career horizons of our students in France and abroad and also to work as a lever to get public funding. So I think this, for all of these reasons, it's essential to have the support of uh, our sponsor and partner companies. And to resume, it's all first a human adventure that the, the, the partnership and company team uh, lives with you and the foundation and the whole HEC ecosystem and of course with the um, company teams and some of them are here this evening I would like to uh, welcome them and thank them for their commitment and their professionalism it's a real delight to see these projects uh, implemented and it's an essential energy for us that makes a, a difference this collective human energy it's really a, a delight to, to see that uh, HEC is a, a platform so well done and thank you very much Thank you to all three of you, uh, Raphael, you're staying with me, and uh, the others can go back to your seat. This year, we've decided to look at two centres in particular, centres of excellence, and to do that, I'm going to welcome Daniel Albert, Associate Professor of Marketing. He holds the FIA Institute Chair called Business Model for Circular Economy. And he's also the Academic Director for the Centre Climate and Earth. But I'm going to start with Raphael, because as well as your corporate sponsorship role, you just started uh, managing the Centre High Paris and seen its genesis. So it would be great if you could do a deep dive and come back and tell us about the role of this centre and the remarkable progress um, it has made over the last few years. Thank you. Indeed, it has been a crazy ride over only two years with High Paris. It's a unique story, in fact, because we have combined our expertise and excellence academic, uh, academic excellence with the Institut Polytechnique of Paris, and Henri had joined us a, a year ago with a shared ambition. And this is to help France to change scale and to become a destination for artificial intelligence and data science. It's also an ambition to open our companies with various dimensions, uh, multidisciplinary advanced skills, deep tech, high touch talent that you need, and also a hyper stimulating ecosystem through the diversity of the stakeholders. Olivier talked about changing the world with High Paris. The idea is to help France and we want to help your companies. And without our six sponsors, L'Oréal, Capgemini, Total Energy, Rexel, Kering and Vinci, nothing would have been possible and nothing would be possible today. So if we have a little flashback of the since the two years it started, what is High Paris? It's high leading edge research with an accent on four dimensions. The first is to keep the best talent within our schools. We know that worldwide there is worldwide competition. The second is to recruit new talent, new professors, especially if we want to change scale. And in two years, we have recruited 10 professors, six at HEC, and all of them will be disseminating their research in their classes. This is key for the second pillar that I'll talk about just afterwards. The third dimension is to train new professors, future professors, that's also our role in our DNA. And we were able to grant 15 scholarships to PhD students. And finally, it's to create activities that make a bridge between the experts, the sponsor teams, and the academic world. High Paris is also the acceleration of learning. We have a flagship program, which is the Masters HEC Masters Data Science for Business. And last year it was number one in Europe and number three in the world. And just a few days ago, we learned that it repeated this performance. And I say hello to Vincent up there. This is a remarkable performance. 
Et donc non seulement la performance est renouvelée, mais en plus on creuse l'écart, enfin pardon, on le, on le rattrape. Not only euh, the performance has been repeated, but we have widened the gap. In fact, we've caught up the gap because we are less than one point away from the first and second MIT and UCLA, so it's really a great performance we can be proud of. So as well as acceleration of learning, it's 500 students who are on the adventure, who meet our sponsors through data boot camps, hackathons, summer schools, and we're delighted to be able to do that. The third and last dimension is the ability to innovate. When we talk about data, it's difficult without talking about infrastructure. Uh, High Paris has created an engineering cell to help our professors to accelerate their research, to optimize their code and put it in open source, because uh, research is a common good, with the best resources and the best tools, calculation tools. Uh, for our, it's also for our students, it's great infrastructure, because there's a lot of work where data is at the heart. It's like a startup studio, High Paris, and we have our first startup, which is the H Factory, which is the first all-in-one experiential platform. If we want to um, um, compete in Europe and change the scale of France, it's the start of the adventure and we would encourage you to join us because it's really uh, a great thing and thanks once again to our sponsors and I think the best people to talk about it are the professors who have a little message for you. I chose to join uh, High Paris because of this vision of artificial intelligence in practice, so not only in the research lab, but with a potential uh, strong impact and beneficial impact for society. I come to HEC Paris because I believe in the importance of interdisciplinary research. I chose HEC and High Paris over other institutions because I believe in our powerful ecosystem connecting academics with corporations organically. We get to provide intelligent solutions to real problems and contribute to the scientific literature at the same time. I joined High Paris to contribute to a better understanding of data science and AI technologies in business and society. For me, a significant draw in coming here was the involvement uh, and the opportunity to work with the High Paris uh, corporate partners. We're seeing an increasing use of AI solutions and uh, algorithms with a disruptive impact on many aspects of business and, uh, and society as well. This evolution raises a number of questions that research has to address. The strong support of our corporate donors has already enabled us to uh, strengthen our existing faculty with the addition of young and new professors working on these issues. It's very exciting to me that, you know, this High Paris Center, it's AI in society and business, it's both. It's about setting this joint context and I think that's going to be just huge moving forward in society as this sort of becomes a bigger and bigger part of the overall society, the overall uh, economy. Artificial intelligence, machine learning and data science are already and will further fundamentally transform the way we work and live together in our modern societies. Ultimately, AI technologies will allow us as humans to make better decisions for the benefit of everyone. This is only the beginning of the journey. The ambition of the center is to become a European leader and to attract up to 30 new faculty together with our partner institutions of IP Paris and INRIA. So we plan to expand further and we need the support of corporate donors in this. So we can see that it's one of the forces of HEC um, to create these poles of excellence and develop um, themes which are transversal across all of the school's programs and um, where research will um, feed into um, the courses. So you probably know we don't need to present um, the Society and Organizations Institute created by Rodolphe Durand and Benedict Febre Tavigno. You probably know that HSC was, was the first business school in 2003 to create a Master of Sustainability and Innovation. And we had doubled the number of students this year, which probably meets the students' uh, uh, needs for this um, theme. Um, in our uh, meetings, we talked about the progress of the center purpose, which was um, initiated by uh, Uber. But maybe you don't know is that 10% of the Grand École um, courses are on this theme. And so we have a new uh, center called Climate and Earth, directed by Daniel Albir, 
who is going to talk about this very new center. He's going to speak in English, so we're going to switch to English. Good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for having me here today. It's a great pleasure. So as uh, Delphine was saying, you know, we're, we're trying to kind of uh, redefine business models to align them with the planetary boundaries. And one of the key ideas is, you know, to develop business models that drastically re reduce resource footprints and at the same time, and this is key, have economic and social benefits. So that's what we're trying to do. We're, we're working in three areas along decarbonization of supply chains. We're trying to figure out ways to accelerate the energy transition. And one of the more recent things is, 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 is kind of finding ways to integrate biodiversity risk into business model design. And, um, you know, another key focus is on circular business models and these attempt to kind of reduce the, the, the drastic resource and waste footprints of linear take, make, dispose business models. And what we're trying to do is kind of figure out smart ways to improve the bottom line for the planet, profit and people. And you were mentioning the achievements, so I can give you maybe a quick overview. We have um, developed a strong partnership with the FII Institute on circular business models. We have published award-winning research on decarbonization of supply chains. So one of the key questions there is, you know, on the what conditions businesses go net zero, which means on the what conditions they are compensating for their carbon emissions. And um, in the teach area, we have uh, launched a completely new climate and business certificate. I think this is a cutting edge offering at HEC. And what is this certificate about? It's going to help students to get familiar with the basics of climate science, climate economics, international policy frameworks, the decarbonization of supply chains from oil to gas, from product manufacturing to service context, and um, we were very successful in acquiring students this year for the first time. There were about 55 students. So it shows it meets the demand of, of students. And finally, in the ACT area, we've launched uh, as a team the HEC Climate and Earth Days. And this is basically a platform to bring researchers and practitioners together to exchange. And in addition, we have um, launched a toolkit for uh, leaders uh, on how to you know deal with climate and business and this is part of a uh, of an alliance uh, it's called business schools for climate leadership alliance where hec is one of the founding partners and um, this has been launched at cop 26 last year and it's available for free for those who want to check it out you can get resources uh, and, and inspiring ideas on how to tackle climate change. And finally, and this is uh, more, you know, like a manifesto, we made the case in Harvard Business Review Online as a team, again, from this Business School for Climate Leadership Initiative, that we need more climate change education in business schools to tackle this planetary emergency. And what, bravo, déjà, bravo. <laughs> So, so, great achievement in one year, right? Yeah, I mean, this is what seems to be one year, but I took over one year ago, and I have to thank a lot of people in this room and who are not with, here, with us today who had, had a strong, you know, initiative to make all this happen. I'm kind of riding the wave and collecting some of the fruits that have been planted years ago, and I'm very grateful for this, but I'm, I'm grateful that we have this chance to keep this momentum going and... Uh, work further in that domain. And today, how many teachers are, or teachers, professors, are, uh, are part of this center? So this is one of the things. We're building a strong network within HEC. We're about 12 to 15 people, depending on how, how it counts. But the amazing thing is we, we're able to bring people together across departments, across intellectual traditions, which is really a transversal thing. And I'm, I'm really great, uh, grateful to see this happening. So what would be the next step for you? Well, uh, the next step is to get more faculty on board, 
to produce more research output. And I think one of the key things is through calibration and another thing is through hiring, which you know, is only possible if we get additional funds to, to get this going. And one thing that's sure is that businesses face tremendous sustainability challenge. Leaders need answers today. And um, if I have a, a wish for this center is that we have a voice in this space to provide thought leadership, to kind of really realign business models with uh, planetary boundaries. Thank you very much, Daniel. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Daniel will stay with us at the end of the event so you can, uh, you can have discussion with him. And I'm sure that you are eager to know the tools and to know more about the tools that he, the center produced. Thank you. Merci aussi pour ce Thank you for what you're doing and putting uh, HEC on the map. And to conclude uh, this uh, part of the session, uh, we have a video that was shot in Chamonix. And you will see that um, those uh, students just joining HEC already have those challenges in mind. And I would like to thank uh, uh, everyone who took part in this uh, experiment. And I would like to thank you both. And uh, we're now going to show the movie. J'avais pas forcément confiance en intégrant HEC que cette conscience environnementale allait être autant enseignée. Et du coup, je trouve que ce séminaire à Chamonix, c'est vraiment une très bonne entrée en matière pour un peu nous faire prendre conscience encore plus de tous les enjeux climatiques. Je trouve ça très bien qu'HEC prenne à bras le corps cette problématique environnementale. Le principe, c'est ici de ressentir, de vivre une expérience, de se poser des questions autour du sens. Donc on ressent des choses et à partir de ça, on va faire des mémoires de recherche. De retour sur le campus, les étudiants, pendant trois mois, vont être accompagnés par des directeurs de mémoire et vont essayer de théoriser ce qu'ils auront ressenti et l'idée de produire un mémoire de recherche dans trois mois. Tout cela est incarné dans un parcours qu'on a nommé Purpose and Sustainability, qui prend ses racines ici à Chamonix, à l'accueil des étudiants et à l'entrée à l'école HEC et qui va les emmener jusqu'à l'entrée dans le monde professionnel. Cette question du réchauffement climatique, je pense qu'elle a vraiment influencé mes choix professionnels et elle a influencé mes choix éducatifs. C'est pour ça que j'ai voulu faire une école de commerce, pour m'investir dans des industries, dans des entreprises qui veulent faire avancer cette question du, du développement durable, qui veulent innover pour lutter contre le réchauffement climatique. Au fond, nous voulons aussi les former humainement à l'éveil de leur mission personnelle et donc à répondre à plusieurs questions comme à quel type d'économie, de société ai-je envie de contribuer Quel type de dirigeant, de manager, de collègue aussi, de citoyen ai-je envie d'être À quel type d'entreprise, d'organisation également veux-je contribuer Ai-je envie d'inventer pour demain J'aimerais beaucoup travailler dans l'industrie du sport et c'est vrai que c'est pour l'instant une industrie qui est très polluante. Donc en fait, je pense que le sport, c'est aussi un, un foyer d'innovation. Et du coup, je pense qu'on peut vraiment essayer de faire changer les choses de l'intérieur. Mais évidemment que dans mon futur métier, je voudrais essayer d'avoir un impact environnemental qui soit bon et essayer de réformer de l'intérieur si possible pour permettre d'avoir une entreprise plus soutenable. Ben on se rend compte que ça va aussi être à nous de faire en sorte, lorsqu'on sera plus tard en entreprise ou lorsqu'on aura des, des fonctions assez importantes, de veiller à ce que le, le respect de l'environnement soit garanti et de veiller à, à accélérer cette transition écologique qui, à mon sens, paraît plus qu'urgente. Plus qu bon, moi, mon souhait, c'est que les jeunes étudiants arrivent à esquisser des questionnements fondamentaux. Ils trouvent ici une force intérieure qui va les permettre de traverser et leur scolarité et de construire leur parcours de vie derrière. Là où ils trouveront leur joie, on le pense, ils trouveront aussi une meilleure capacité d'agir, un meilleur impact pour les personnes autour d'eux et pour le monde. To have an impact on the world is our ambition. This is what we wish and this is the mission of the school.
And uh, we wanted to make sure that the field was citizens of the world. We often say that within HEC, there are about 100 nationalities. So it is uh, a small world, and it's a great opportunity. And with your support for the last 15 years, we have uh, developed a lot of setups to promote this diversity. And we are very pleased to have uh, Eloïc Berak, but also Adrien Nussenbaum, who is uh, the uh, co-founder the co-founder of Miracle, and uh, with uh, Adrien, we were on the, this same stage. Eloïc, uh, we uh, are committed in the university dimension. Could you perhaps uh, give us some information about the changes? Yes, uh, good uh, evening to you all. Olivier was talking about uh, being a, a platform and to be at the service of making an impact. This is one of the four pillars of HEC, but this is a very important pillar. And uh, entrepreneurship is uh, also part of uh, social promotion and education is also at the heart of uh, social ladder. So with alumni, with the school, we are all very involved upstream, uh, that is uh, within high, high school, within uh, preparatory, preparatory schools. So we have uh, competitions, uh, we have basically public speaking competitions as well, and uh, but uh, they are trained uh, for public speaking, and we are training them to say that they can have this ambition. HEC is the only business called giving uh, and granting uh, scholarships um, before they arrive at HEC. Uh, we have uh, given 600 uh, scholarships, so there are 400 uh, potential uh, candidates. Uh, so the objective is uh, to go much beyond uh, the uh, students and uh, say that uh, we aimed higher. And uh, you also, uh, that way, allow them to change um, the way they can move in their careers. Um, and we have tried to also have some changes in the entrance exam in order to promote excellence and to have better diversity. These are two um, of the values uh, within HEC, and we wanted to promote excellence and diversity, and this is what we have done. And from the first year, we had a 20% increase in admissible uh, potential scholars. And uh, uh, more students were admitted within the school. So for the first time in the history of the school, uh, at the, the um, entrance exam, we had 15% of um, uh, scholarship beneficiaries. So um, it is indeed a very significant uh, step. And we're going to try to carry on investing. We have set up programs uh, so that there's a very specific follow-up and uh, high potential uh, for um, those uh, who wanted to uh, come to the school. And uh, some of them are here today, and I would like to thank them for being here today, together with the entire team. So we are very committed. In, in France, Rafael was saying that the objective was to help the uh, French project. But when we are promoting um, social advancement, uh, we want to create a society, creating bridges. Um, and we have to also go beyond um, the French borders. It's all very well. We are doing things in France, but why, why not go beyond uh, the French territory? So the world uh, is uh, quite big. And when we are saying going beyond the French territory, uh, this can be quite a challenge. And there are three projects. Uh, one uh, that will be mentioned by Adrien. I will talk about the other two. Lebanon is the eighth most represented nationality uh, on the campus. 
So you can see that uh, it doesn't represent the size of the country. HEC has a, has a long-standing history with Lebanon. There is a love story with Lebanon. Uh, we are very close, and I think that we were all very affected by what's happening in Lebanon and by the very difficult social and economic situation in Lebanon. Uh, so with Jean-Paul, uh, we went to see someone that is uh, uh, quite well known in Lebanon, uh, Rodolphe Saadé. Um, he's not an alumni, he doesn't have any children in HEC, but uh, we told him you can perhaps help us to have a strong impact. You can take part in an extra extraordinary adventure by granting uh, scholarships uh, to students who could no longer go abroad, and by doing so you will change the course of their destiny. It took about an hour or 45 minutes and he became the biggest non-HEC donor. He committed to grant 20 scholarships per year over 20 years. You will have one of the students that has benefited from this scholarship. We had over 400 students. We have selected 20 of them and we're going to do the same thing next year. And uh, we held our promise, and this was one of the projects uh, with uh, Rodolphe. And the second project is that we had uh, very few African students on the campus, and this is not normal, again. HSC is a brand, France has a history, with part of Africa. Uh, it is a continent that is uh, in the process of uh, developing itself, and there were no reason for uh, not uh, changing this. So we had Pac Afrique, uh, and we worked with uh, some uh, major establishments uh, in Africa, and to have a long-term uh, follow-up with people from HEC, uh, with students as well, in order to try and uh, uh, submit an application to HEC and in September the intake was multiplied by four so we have about 20 students uh, hailing from Guinea, from Côte d'Ivoire, from Gabon, from Cameroon and uh, they arrived on the campus. We are recruiting about 230 students from the um, international schools, so we are still below 10 percent but our objective is to uh, carry on this work with, with Philippe that I saw in the room, we want to have 500 students that we follow up and about 100 students that would come to HEC. And so again, if we uh, do not finance um, those studies and we don't offer scholarships, it is very difficult for them to fund themselves. And so the teams have worked really hard to make this possible. And I have seen some that are here today, so it is really wonderful. So these were two of uh, out of three programs, and I'm going to give the floor to my colleague for the other one. So we're going to have a break, actually. We are going to call Emily Céline and Antoine. And they are going to talk about their career path. Uh, Emily Céline is uh, from the Drôme and uh, Antoine is from Lebanon. I think he arrived uh, quite recently and they are going to take the floor and represent uh, some of uh, their students. My name is Emily Céline. I'm 21 years old. I um, entered a business school um, preparatory class in Lyon in my close circle. I didn't know anyone who had gone through a preparatory class. Um, and uh, it is in my last uh, year of high school that I could exchange with students uh, who had gone through this sort of training so that I could understand what I could expect after my baccalaureate. And um, I was encouraged to uh, apply. My uh, parents have always um, supported me and they discovered with me the whole system step by step, uh, two years of study, at the end of which uh, I had to pass a competitive examination and then the business school. Uh, I benefited from the foundation support right from the preparatory classes uh, through the PREP HEC program. 
and I was very proud to uh, benefit from this scholarship um, because I could see that the school believed in me before I joined the school. And uh, my efforts paid off, uh, and I will join HEC in 2020, and I will start uh, and I start uh, my career in this pres prestigious school, uh, curious, motivated, and I met Franz Sega, our privileged contact with the foundation, very accessible and attentive. Uh, I took the chance uh, to be accompanied by a mentor, thanks to the mentoring program between the scholarship students and alumni. It was mentioned at the beginning of uh, this evening. It's set up by HS, HEC Benevola and the Foundation's Equal Opportunities Mission. And I would particularly like to thank my mentor, Claire, uh, for her time, her support, uh, and her attention, which allowed me to get to know myself better, to better understand my expectations, to discover the codes of the corporate world and therefore to make my first professional choices with uh, more serenity. And it is a relationship of trust, of respect, and even of friendship that has been established. Um, business school like HEC changes a lot of things for me. It offers me the possibility to be trained by very good professors, and it also gives me the strength to be part of a great community. I would also say that um, and it allows me to be part of um, the alumni network. And finally, I would say that it is a state of mind that we nurture and that pushes us and to be the best we can be. And the motto of the school is learn today, and it's a mantra that we have, that we seem to know, and this motivates me and inspires me for the rest of my journey. So tonight, I would like to thank you for the pres precious help that uh, has been given to me. Thank you. Um, good evening to you all. My name is Antoine Chela. I come from Lebanon. And I'm really happy to share my story with you. I was born and raised in Beirut in a family that uh, dedicates a lot of its time to volunteering and helping other, others. And this uh, instilled in me from an early age um, the will to act and to better understand uh, the needs of others. So uh, I got uh, I graduated from the American University of Beirut uh, with a degree in business management, but um, I didn't really know what path I wanted to choose. So I entered the world of training where I help design and develop programs and courses for young leaders from all over the world who are seeking to realize their social and environmental product projects in their respective communities. This path has allowed me to make great acquaintances to discover the world of change makers, but also to meet others and myself. The values of the French culture were instilled in me from my childhood thanks to the double Lebanese French curriculum that I followed during my schooling years. So I've always wanted to study in France. This dream turned into a goal the day I discovered the master's degree in sustainable development and social innovation offered by HEC Paris. From my first glance at the school's website, I knew that I'd found a master's degree that I was passionate about and that addressed the needs of the world and the planet. <coughs> but this dream was not easy uh, to uh, come true. Over the past three years, my country is undergoing a lot of issues. And it is very difficult for us um, to fulfill our dreams. So I sent uh, my application to HEC without any guarantee, but with a lot of hope. And HEC said that uh, I um, had the uh, support of uh, the HEC Foundation. And there's a new agreement between the CMRC, GM, and HEC Paris that has enabled 18 young Lebanese to pursue their higher education during this academic year. Today, after more than a month of my studies at HEC, I feel a 
passion that drives me, and I feel that I'm at the right place um, with the right people. I'm um, very grateful to have received or to receive a training that will allow me to face the um, challenges of today's world. So I would really like to thank you for your support and for having helped me and for helping me to become the leader I want to be and to grow as a person, to push my limits and to learn more so that I can give back. I would like to thank you for helping me, helping our world. Thank you. Thank you both for your testimonies and congratulations for being here. We're very happy to have you amongst us on this campus. We're going to talk about the third program that I mentioned with Adrien. A year ago, we were on the campus together to talk about entrepreneurship and philanthropy. And we are here to announce the launch of um, this other program. Can you remind us of the ambition of this program? The objective and ambition are very simple. It's peace, peace on Earth. It's easy, isn't it? <laughs> Come on, you can clap for peace on Earth. And what, um, what else could we dream of than having a, a training to train the hearts and the brains, but also the souls, and even if this ambition uh, is perhaps utopiste. judged uh, en tant as being too dreamy. As long as you haven't given up, uh, there is still hope. So peace on earth with the foundation, foundation, with the school, with the association. We had this idea, and uh, I think it is uh, carried very well, but we had uh, this idea of launching this uh, fellowship this program, but it's more than a scholarship. HEC Imagine Fellows is a movement, is a platform around four pillars. The scholarships are for students uh, coming from war-torn areas, uh, curriculum uh, with uh, topics uh, related to business and peace, and they are courses that were incorporated in the curriculum that are going to try and see how through business you can prevent conflicts, how you can try and stop them, and how you can uh, make things better. And that's the second pillar. The third pillar is association-based, and I would like to uh, thank those who joined the Imagine Association on the campus, and it's going to um, carry those messages, and uh, hopefully uh, over the next two or three years, um, we will organize a uh, youth business and peace uh, summit. We are going to create a movement, hopefully going beyond um, HEC, and uh, we've already got a ticket for Stockholm. This is where the Nobel Prize is uh, being awarded because you have to repair the world, but also repair a mistake, namely that there is no educational institution that has been granted to, um, that has been uh, awarded uh, the uh, uh, Nobel Peace Prize. Um, um, so this is the beginning of this adventure. Um, and um, I would like to thank uh, everyone who has already given uh, within this room, and there are a lot of them, and it's very generous, uh, and I think that we are cre creating something that is rather exceptional. So this is the HEC Imagine Fellows program. Thank you. Eloïc, can you tell us what happened over the last year? Well, it was the first year. And you know, when you recruit within HEC, we talked uh, we talked about HEC all over the world. We have thousands of applications. HEC selects students, and students are coming over. And with Imagine, it's a total transformation uh, about the way we uh, are doing business. Um, we launched Imagine uh, a year ago, and we said that the first beneficiaries should be an Afghan uh, woman. Talibans had just taken over. Uh, the country again, 
and we felt that it was a, a good way to start. Unfortunately, there are a lot of conflicts in a lot of countries, and uh, the teams uh, started to work with NGOs, with diplomatic services, with uh, the military. We have uh, auditions uh, with candidates that are hidden under the bed and stop uh, their conversation saying, I cannot talk anymore, I'll call you back. Um, so it was quite a, a mad process, but it gave us a lot of a sense. And uh, then we are we tried to see how we would bring them over. We had to mobilize uh, diplomatic services. We had the, the Islamabad um, French ambassador. We were in Qatar as well. So this was quite an adventure. And uh, you know we would be ready to do it again and again. And, and this is a transformation. We basically went to find them. Uh, and Sophie did an excellent work to make this possible with all the teams involved. And so we said to ourselves, this is the first year. Uh, we are going to try and have two scholarships, and then we'll have the HEC Gala, and there's great generosity within the Gala, and seven uh, students were admitted uh, as early as the first year, uh, Afghan, Syrian, and Ukrainian citizens. Seven were admitted, and unfortunately, four have already arrived. One is going to talk, take the floor um, in not too long a time, and the others, there's a Ukrainian who unfortunately is still stuck in his country, mobilized by the conflict, and is not allowed to leave the country. One of the young Afghan ladies, her, her husband, it's a young couple, and uh, they were working for the previous government. They have seized uh, their phone and their uh, traveling papers, uh, their computer, and um, she is under house arrest and uh, unable to come. But we uh, are not giving up and we're still trying to work on this. Uh, so in total, these are seven in total that um, were granted um, and this, um, uh, these scholarships, uh, four are already here on the campus, and uh, this motivates us every morning when we have uh, those sorts of initiatives. And in the business school, we feel that uh, companies that are at the heart of the solution on many topics, but also on the topic of peace. And uh, this way, we're going to grow further. So, Eloic, you're staying with me. We're going to talk about the future, but uh, there are quite a lot of projects. Uh, and the students have thanked you, the professors, or, and ourselves are also thanking you from the bottom of our heart. We did not choose uh, the topic of this evening uh, just by chance. We said building the future together. And I'm going to uh, give the floor to Jean-Paul Agnon, president of HEC Paris, as well as Olivier Sevilla. Yes, this has been quite emotional. Thank you. So this is an important part. septembre 1964, première rentrée à HEC. Je m'étais réveillé tôt pour courir près du lac. Je découvrais ce tout nouveau campus avec des yeux d'enfant. <rire> Finalement, quelle belle idée ça avait été de quitter Paris. Les cours étaient déjà donnés dans les petites salles du Bazette et nous avions la chance d'avoir un centre de calcul IBM. On se retrouvait souvent dans le hall d'honneur 
ou dans le désormais mythique amphi Blandeau pour des conférences. Je me souviens très bien des cahiers verts et des affiches de Baume HEC. J'aimais refaire le monde avec mes camarades, jouer au rugby pendant des heures, et bien sûr, travailler mes examens à la bibliothèque, coucher dans l'herbe ou dans ma chambre. L'école était masculine et mon co-douche s'appelait Pierrot. Parfois, on apercevait des biches depuis notre balcon. Ensemble, nous rêvions de conquérir le monde. Ce campus, c'était une révolution. Dear mom, I feel so comfortable here. It's like a small planet and every day I meet students from all over the world. And I've already made some lifelong friends. Nature is everywhere here. There's a lake down there and yesterday I saw deer in the park. We even have a shared garden to grow vegetables, le potage oui. I got involved in a student club called Fleur de Bitume where I mentor young students. I'm already thinking about starting my own business and I may have found the right person to start it with. I feel free here, free to build my own path and show my true colors. Et si demain s'ouvrait une nouvelle page pour notre campus Un campus repensé, engagé et engageant, capable d'accueillir les talents du monde entier, pour y développer l'intelligence collective, la curiosité de l'autre, la diversité et l'inclusion. Un campus avec de nouveaux espaces de rencontre et d'apprentissage autour d'un cœur qui deviendra notre lieu de vie et qui mettra à l'honneur la production de savoir et l'enseignement, aussi bien que le sport, le bien-être et le respect de l'environnement. Il est temps de lancer ce projet de nouveau campus qui sera le visage de notre école pour les 50 prochaines années et qui permettra à chacun de vivre une expérience transformante au service d'un monde plus inclusif, plus durable, pacifié et prospère. Bonsoir à tous. Good evening to you all. As you know that I have taken charge of being the president of AGC Paris, so I'm a newbie, a rookie. But I'm very happy uh, to be responsible for this mission, which is uh, thrilling and very important for the school and for the years to come. I'm very happy to work uh, with um, the team, with Eloïc. Uh, I see Eloïc every day, and I say that it will be, um, you know, an easygoing mission. Uh, but this is not exactly how it's unfolding, but I'm really pleased working with Olivier, Adrien, Eloïc, with the association, with the, the school, with the foundation. So a lot of things are going on, and it's very interesting. And amongst all the very interesting projects from the school, one of them is vital, is essential. It's this new campus. I was warned that uh, in the room uh, there would be some people that uh, were already briefed uh, a few years ago by being told uh, that there would be a new campus uh, and the trick was played on them. There was a mock-up done by Jean-Michel Villemotte and that the project had been launched and had been launched twice, I believe, and it stopped twice. So we are relaunching this project and uh, I can promise you that we are going to um, bring this to fruition. Why is it important? Well, this project, and this is uh, my role, this is done in a collective manner, in a very collective manner. We're going to involve everyone, uh, of course, and the school, uh, Eloïc, and uh, his team are going to be involved, the students, professors, everyone. This is a project that also involves the foundation. And in fact, we're going to ask the foundation to contribute and help us. This involves uh, the association as well as the Chamber of Commerce, because the Chamber of Commerce is one of the first stakeholders uh, as part of this project. And we have a great collaboration with the Chamber of Commerce, a very harmonious, very cordial with the Chamber of Commerce and everything is running very smoothly. Why is it a very important project? Well, if, uh, I think it was very well summarized uh, in the video we just viewed. I think that the HEC campus, and you know it and just as well as I do, because we all went through the HEC campus and this uh, campus 
uh, give us uh, some structure in our lives as students, but in our lives generally, if we close our eyes, we all remember the times we spent on this campus. And one has to remember that uh, 60 years ago, because it was uh, opened in 1964, so 58 years ago, this was a, a futuristic uh, project. HEC was uh, the first school to get out of Paris and uh, created this American-style campus. This was something rather extraordinary. Uh, the first few days on the campus, uh, I was uh, uh, really startled, uh, and I still uh, believe uh, things are being changed, evolved. But I think that uh, you can still be wowed by this campus. So a campus is uh, something that can structure your life and um, that uh, can uh, help you to go through the various years uh, within the school. And this campus contributed uh, for the school to have a soul. I don't know if there's a soul within the campus, but this campus uh, contributed to making the school what it is. So what is uh, developed by Loic, an inclusive uh, location, a place of excellence, uh, but also environmentally friendly, integrative, um, and I think that the campus uh, was an integral part of the soul of uh, the school. This campus was uh, created uh, 58 years ago, and uh, over this time, the world has changed around, around us, and uh, we need to make sure that it evolves uh, accordingly. We cannot break up everything, but it has to evolve. It is really important. And the project that we have together, I'm only the spokesperson or the coordinator for this project. The project that we have together is not only a question of uh, uh, renovating real estate. We have to reinvent the school for the years to come. This is uh, our answer. This is part of our answer to uh, take up this challenge. Uh, and uh, what are the challenges, actually? There are three of them. I think we've agreed on, on those with Eloïc. The first one is that we have to change the education model. And this could be paradoxical at a time or where the world is becoming more and more digital to create a, a brick and mortar campus. But we actually feel that the more the world becomes digitized and the more we need to focus on brick and mortar. We known that with L'Oreal O plus O, the more trade becomes equal commerce uh, and the more the shops, uh, so brick and mortar and shops have to be an experience where you can really experience uh, what is happening there. And I think it is the same for the school. HEC does not want it to become a purely digital uh, remote um, schooling um, establishment. There will be a hybrid uh, formula and we must be able to offer the best experience on site. And the new generations, uh, the young students that we have on the campus, they love the campus. They love the fact that it is possible to have this uh, remote learning, of course, with more modern uh, technology. But they also like the experience of being on the campus physically. The uh, second challenge is inclusion and diversity. We have had those testimonies, and uh, it is quite extraordinary. And we were really moved by the latest testimony. And uh, the fact that we can have this sort of exchange on a physical campus, and um, that we can experience um, life uh, with people from all over the world. This is really the human experiment, human interaction. We could not always work 
using Zoom and video conferencing, and HEC wants to be also a trailblazer when it comes to environmental responsibility as well as um, societal um, responsibility, and this campus so could perhaps be the best location on Earth when uh, promoting inclusive and environmentally friendly uh, education. So this is a great project. Uh, to be honest, uh, this is uh, quite a tricky project, and we're going to try and work together. And I think that uh, with everyone, we uh, want in a collaborative manner uh, make of this campus a competitive advantage for the next 50 years. So I hope that in 50 years from now, someone will say or will remember that in 2022, uh, we had launched the first step of this project and that the next 50 years will uh, see very happy students in uh, very um, mobile environment, but that this campus will be the heart and the, and the soul of the school. Thank you, Jean-Paul. You did say that uh, we were expecting this project. Do you have uh, some timeline for the project? What are you talking about, a timeline? Well, first of all, the teams have been working for 18 months on uh, this project and there's a, a very strong team uh, working uh, with the school, with the Chamber of Commerce. But uh, we are moving apace and uh, again, um, this has to be done. There were two false starts and so enough is enough and we have to uh, move on now and we will do it very well and uh, call for tenders uh, are going to start um, now and we will be very busy with those uh, throughout uh, 2023 and you can really count on us. Uh, we are going to really uh, take on this project and we are going to devote all our energy on this project. And I do not want to preempt what Olivier is going to say, but of course we're going to count on you because all the causes that are promoted by HEC are great. But uh, one great cause for everyone uh, should be the campus, because we want to promote this great location for the next 50 years, which will still structure the student life of those coming after us. So we are counting on the commitment of everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you for um, this challenge. Eloïc, uh, we are trying to design a campus for the next 50 years in 2022. How does this happen? Well, I think that um, this is a historical um, moment, but of course the history of HEC is uh, a succession of a historical moment. The campus changed a lot since 1964. In fact, it changed a lot over the last 10 years. We uh, re renovated all the um, student rooms, we have built new buildings, uh, we always invest on a daily basis, all the, and the teams are mobilized, uh, but there is some discontinuity, and, and this is um, the issue right now. You were saying, Jean-Paul, the more um, digital learning happens and the more campuses are going to disappear, but the, the most extraordinary campuses will be even more attractive and they have to be so uh, having this experience is um, what we need to bear in mind when uh, designing this campus so i would like to come back to what uh, had been asked of jean-michel villemotte and his brilliance so he went beyond um, our request we asked him for a master plan, the, the campus is uh, very big, 150 hectares, and there were several buildings. Sometimes, perhaps I should almost say randomly, could we perhaps 
ask you to rethink this campus. Oh, what will be the flows? How will it be structured? It was a master plan, and its master plan is the first step for any architectural program. Uh, so, and then, then there will be a competitive uh, process uh, to find architects. And then COVID happened, and it was an ex existential crisis. So we asked ourselves, how are we going to teach uh, during this pandemic? And of course, uh, the project uh, was delayed. So over the last 18 months, we have really worked really hard. And, um, you know, there are all sorts of topics that I discover on a daily basis. Um, so when I was lucky to uh, meet Jean-Michel Villemot, and he gave us um, a file, and there was his drawing on the first page, and he said there are two symmetrical axes. So one is moving from the old entrance and going to the blue arch. This is this avenue. And he also said this will have to be um, the avenue of knowledge. And then there's a second axis going from the new entrance, and that is going down to the castle. And those two axes are basically meeting at the heart of the campus. And this is what is missing. There is no heart. Uh, there is no core. The professors are uh, on the periphery. Um, so where is the heart of the campus? And this is what we retained. We said we need to have a heart. We need to have an agora for uh, the campus. And there is also a learning center that has to be worth its name. You have all spent hours and hours, uh, but of course, uh, this is a place uh, where students uh, go quite a lot. And, and there will be a co-working space. It will be a location for exchanges, for a meeting. We can privatize some spaces as well. We also need catering. Uh, HEC is a location where uh, you identify problems, uh, but there should not be obstacles. Uh, you want to overcome those obstacles. And in order to find solutions to those obstacles, you have to meet together. Not everything uh, should happen in the student halls of residence. So we need this uh, heart for the campus. And when you look at all the challenges that we are going to be faced with, um, health-related, um, artificial intelligence, uh, climate, It will have to be solved in a multidisciplinary approach. Uh, we have seen it in a video as well. Uh, Nicola is a professor in economics. You have professors in law, in marketing. You have operational management professors. And the topic is um, multidisciplinarity. So uh, we were talking about the fact that it's a group of professors with uh, various topics uh, and uh, pluridisciplinarity, pluridisciplinarity has arrived on the campus. And we want to have those links uh, going beyond the historical uh, faculties. Uh, and we have um, the Entrepreneurial and Innovation Center, and there are multidisciplinary. So um, our professors are uh, spread out over three buildings. Uh, it is not uh, easy uh, to be multidisciplinary. So our objective is to have only one building as flat as possible, perhaps uh, two stories, and make sure that everyone can meet and can mix and can exchange opinions in order to address those great issues of tomorrow. The third point that was mentioned was COVID. It changed the way we teach. It was a challenge. It was difficult. We learned a lot, but again, uh, this will help us to define the classroom of tomorrow, and uh, we will have to work on defining the classroom over the next 50 years. And, uh, you know, this is rather frightening for me. And uh, it has to be flexible, uh, it has to be modular, and uh, the classroom will be uh, super connected. There will be uh, students um, that uh, will be um, on the campus, others that will be uh, listening remotely, 
there may also be some joint classes with Yale and other business schools. So there could be classrooms where you have holographic uh, technology. And uh, you will have uh, professors that stay in, uh, within uh, the HEC campus and are going to basically um, have a hologram in another business school. We are going to invite um, celebrities um, as holograms before you had to book uh, them uh, a plane ticket. And now, perhaps in the future, this technology will be so um, affordable that we will be able to have those holograms. So the classroom of tomorrow uh, has to be invented today, but we don't want to take too many risks, so we have to renovate massively the uh, buildings and that are available at the moment, but we also have to make sure that it's possible because we have to be able to listen. So the classroom for tomorrow is everything except uh, the amphitheater that we have today. So it's a beautiful amphitheater. I have no doubt about it, but it's not exactly the sort of teaching environment that we will have. Uh, we need to be in project mode. Uh, we need to connect each other. We need to listen and so on. So this will be part of the classroom of tomorrow. And the fourth point is uh, what uh, uh, is the reason why you're here today, this, this feeling of um, belonging. And uh, we see each other uh, again, and, we, and this uh, sense of belonging, you have to be on the campus to experience it and to nurture it and for it to be an experience that you will remember for the rest of your life. And so we have to uh, build 500 new um, student rooms. And um, we are going to work in uh, the sports and leisure um, area as well. And fifth and last point, it's uh, Looking at the portfolio structure of a business school, and historically, MBAs are the uh, general uh, well standard, and HEC is stronger and stronger and more and more recognized in this field. A grand école and the masters um, give us this leadership on a European standard, on an Asian standard, but maybe not the world standard. And uh, life, uh, lifelong learning is a great asset as well. Everyone will have to uh, carry on being training because things are moving so quickly that it is an opportunity like ours. Uh, they are the leaders in executive education, and they will be able to um, train a high potential staff of the various groups. And for that, we have a castle at the bottom of the campus. You've all seen it. It's a, a great setting. And if you really want to impress someone, you invite someone with a, uh, within the castle and you have a cocktail over the terrace and they say, you know, you can have a look at the view. And whether we're talking about Dean from uh, major business schools or anybody else, so this will be the premium location for executive education. This will be our lifelong learning education location. And uh, you have the commons uh, from the chateau, from the castle, and we're going to uh, rebuild them. These will be learning centers. So we are going to invest uh, in the castle, and we will, are going to create uh, this castle and uh, you're going to have training of uh, one day, two days, you will be on the campus and you will have this HEC touch uh, regularly. Uh, you will have uh, some talks in the evening, uh, ability to uh, network, and uh, it will be very clear. So uh, we've said it several times, and um, you must have heard it when I was talking about uh, equal opportunities within HEC, that uh, things could change thanks to you. And um, indeed, uh, we have the opportunity to change uh, the destiny of the school over the next few years, but it's the destiny of this uh, community to change uh, the destiny of everyone. So thank you very much. Olivier. 
I think that we understood that the foundation uh, would have a role to play. I was uh, saying in my introduction that uh, HEC was a, a great platform and uh, I think that uh, we have all experienced what it means. The campus is, the, um, is at the core of the platform. So, of course, the foundation will be here to mobilize our funds in order for HEC to have uh, the campus it deserves for the next 50 years. And the good news is that a lot of us will have the opportunity to contribute in writing this new page in the HEC history. And in uh, all sorts of ways, we will come back to you uh, and we are counting on you because in order for this project to be a success, we need the goodwill of everyone. And uh, this concludes uh, our contribution. You'll be able to uh, meet everyone uh, you uh, will be able to uh, meet uh, those that are um, steering the projects and please also look at what, are they, what they are doing because they are doing a great job and I would like to invite all the students that uh, uh, were here to come on the podium to take a picture. Mm, they are at the back of the room, as I used to do when I was a student myself. This uh, campus project is a way of uh, passing on the baton. Please join us. Good evening to you all. So you are going to help them. So thank you on their behalf for everything that you are doing because it has a true impact and it's helping the world to be a better place. Please don't be shy. Learn to dare. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. And uh, thank you for the team from the foundation. Thank you very much to everyone. I would like uh, to ask the members of the campaign committee, the members of the board as well, so that we have a group picture because they also uh, need to be thanked. So a round of applause uh, to them and to everyone who took the floor this evening. I think that the stage is full. Can we actually take a picture?
What a great team. Thank you very much. And let's talk again during the cocktail.